Frilled sharks are among the more peculiar and out there sharks alive today, and are decent in size too, as about 2 meters in length. Their diversity broadly in the past though was quite a bit more diverse, and as we'll see in this video, got much, much bigger. This is seen in the genus Proteothrunax goliath, which is an aptly named animal that lives during the late Cretaceous in and around the seas that now constitutes the country of Angola. Discovered in 2002 during the beginning stages of the Paleo-Angola project, they were initially assigned to the genus Chlamydocelicus, which the living frilled sharks are a part of, though this would come under revision later on. Because all that we know from them is their teeth, understanding how they differed from living frilled sharks is a puzzle itself, and while seeming difficult, can be resolved both from the structure of said teeth and also where they were found, which also gives some clues as to their behaviour and potential appearance. The main features that distinguishes them from frilled sharks is the more erect and more stout cusps on their side view, which are also larger than their relatives at up to 20mm in height, also having smooth enamel which lacks much in the way of ornamentation. They were later described as their own genus of Rolfodon, the validity of which will be considered shortly, being named in the memory of Dr. Rolf Ludvigsen, a late British Columbian paleontologist. The validity of this naming has been called into question by some circles. Proteothrunax was named as a replacement for the former genus of Thrinax, which was already preoccupied with that of a sawfly by the same name, an unfortunate and all too common trend in paleontology, with that term then being synonymized into Chlamydocelacus in 1990, then being put into the new genus of Rolfodon in 2021, which, considering Proteothrunax was the earlier of the terms before the change in classification, should therefore instead be considered as a senior synonym, though this has yet to be formally picked up on. With the convoluted classification out of the way, Proteothrinax was quite an impressive animal, as mentioned earlier, being estimated to reach lengths of up to 7 metres, making them at least in terms of length larger than living great whites, and meant that given that living frilled sharks are quite the generalists when it comes to diets, it means that because of their size, Proteothrinax could well have gone after larger animals, potentially including juvenile mosasaurs, if given the chance. The regions where they've been found, along with their relatives, indicates that the marine environments they were inhabiting were more shallow than expected, at about 100 to 300 metres in depth, which is quite different from living frilled sharks, which prefer regions of between 500 and 1000 metres. Of course, preservation bias may well be a factor to consider, though if this preferred habitat is to be taken as valid, these animals, in living in more clear waters, may well have appeared differently, having more bluish tones and countershading to be able to better ambush their prey in different conditions, which for any paleo artist watching is definitely something to consider when drawing them. All in all, I thank you for watching this video on these animals and that you may have learned something new. If you would like to see more from this channel, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and with that, I'll see you for the next instalments of this year's Shark Week.